Broadly speaking, we know what a classic car is. We could argue about the finite definitions, but generally we can accept what a classic car is. We also know what a modern car is, in that we get all the most up-to-date creature comforts and refinements that you can expect in a brand new car. But this car has had the definition of modern or classic argued about it since it was new. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nissan Figaro. Strange as it might seem, this is actually a bit of a boyhood dream car for me. I loved these when I was a kid. I went and looked up loads of details about them, I looked at the brochures, and I even looked at buying and importing one from Japan a couple of years ago. I love these things because they're so quirky, they're so different, and those are my favourite types of cars. And the best part is, the Figaro wasn't alone. Launched in 1989, the Figaro was built in Nissan's Pike factory in Japan, a special factory for its special production cars. It included the Figaro, the BE1, the Payo, and the S Cargo, a van styled to look a bit like a snail, hence S Cargo. Ha ha. The Figaro was intended to be a very low production car, with only around 2,000 of them made. But they proved so popular in Japan, they ended up selling around 20,000 of them. And they were so in demand, they had to sell build slots through a lottery. You actually had to buy a ticket and win a raffle to win the opportunity to buy one of these things. That's how in demand they were. Normally, we can talk about the styling of a car in around about 30 seconds. But with the Figaro, where all of it is to do with the styling, we're going to take a little bit longer. It goes without saying that this look wasn't designed to look of the day in 1989. In fact, the official influence for the Figaro's styling was 1950s European microcars. However, Nissan immediately had a problem when it came to styling it like a car from the 50s. Nissan wasn't called Nissan back in the 50s. They were called Datsun. But that that name had been pretty much entirely phased out by 1989 when this car was released. So to get around that issue, there are no Nissan or Datsun badges on the car at all. Any badges for this car's name, for example, on the wheel trims, all say Figaro. And the only one Nissan badge on the exterior of this car is about a quarter of an inch wide on the base of the number plate plinth. And again, unless you get right on top of it, you wouldn't even see it. Producing a car with this unique look and interior was never going to be a cheap thing to do, and indeed in its Japanese native market, the Figaro was quite an expensive car. But you did get a lot for your money. For example, the paint. Most cars of the 80s and 90s are suffering from quite bad paint fade by now because they use early water-based paints that just don't last. Look at any Mark 1 MX-5 that hasn't been resprayed for proof of that. However, the Figaro uses a lot more expensive and a lot thicker, but very high quality paint. The paint itself was actually one of the main styling cues of the Figaro. In a very Japanese spiritual type way, there are four colors offered on the Figaro and each one of them represents a different season. This particular car is emerald green to represent spring, but you could also get topaz mist, which represents autumn, pale aqua to represent summer, and lapis grey to represent winter. And whichever colour you chose, the car wore it fantastically well, and those colours genuinely looked period for the 1950s. The 50s styling fest continues inside, where every single detail has been done up to go with the theme of the outside of the car. Things like the chrome bezels for all the switches, and the fact the steering wheel is Bakelite, as opposed to plastic to go with that whole 50s feel. And it's not just the look and feel of it, the quality is there as well to go with the outside. All the switch gear still feels really good and really solid. And then you've got the stereo. In 1989, Nissan offered a Figaro with a CD player. This is one of the first cars ever released to have a commercially available CD player in a car, and as you'd expect, still works perfectly. You might also notice that the roof comes off. Those are one of the weak points on Figaro's because the frames can break like a lot of convertibles of this era, but when it works, it seals perfectly and there's surprisingly little wind noise for such a small car with a thin fabric roof. All four of the cars built in the Pike factory were based broadly on the K10 Micra platform, or March as it's known in Japan, and all four of them use a lot of Micra underpinnings. The Figaro is the most powerful of all of them though. It's the MA10 ET 1 litre 4 cylinder turbocharged engine. But don't go thinking that makes it a sports car. 
The Figaro might give you 75 horsepower, but because it weighs 1,030 kilos, which is no small figure for a car this tiny, 0 to 60 is only coming up in 12 seconds. So no, you're not gonna be taking this one down the drag strip. It becomes clear the moment you start driving it that the Figaro is not meant to be a B-road bashing sports car. Even if you ignore the fact that you've only got a three-speed automatic gearbox and the gearing is preferential to low speeds, shall we say. The steering is okay. It's not particularly sharp or feelsome. And the suspension is marshmallowy. This is quite a wandery, wobbly car, and you are not gonna have much precision hacking this down your favorite road. What it is, is a fantastic cruising car. The steering might be numb, but it is so light. That three-speed auto is super smooth, and because of the turbo, the engine's got the torque to just pull you along. The suspension isn't sharp for handling, it's soft and cushiony for comfort. The seats, really nice leather, are really nice to just settle into. Get the roof back, get yourself on a nice day, put it in D, and enjoy what is a lovely cruising car. So what if you fancy buying yourself a Figaro? What's it like to own one? Well, to find out, let's talk to Simon, editor of Classics Monthly, who's been running this very Figaro. I wanted one because I'd lived in Japan for a couple of years just at the time these came out, so I'd seen them when they were new and always really liked them. You can get the parts for them, there's specialists over here, um, there's a lot of cars that have been broken, so there are some second-hand parts, but they can also tackle parts or get parts shipped in from Japan. Some of it is micro running gear, um, not quite, not as much as you'd think. Some things take a little time and some things are eye-wateringly expensive. We got little um, plastic knobs on the heater controls and one of them was broken and they were something like £30 each. The only negative you get from some people is that they'll call it a pastiche, which it is. I mean, it's, it's meant to look like 1950s car, but they've done the job so well. You have to love the styling because it's all about the styling. If that does it for you, then, then why not? Get one that's not rusty because they do rot and that can get quite expensive and get one that's complete because as I said, little bits of trim if you've got something missing and you then got to replace it, um, it can be a bit of a shock. Whether we admit it or not, one of the charms of driving a classic car are the looks you get. People pointing and staring and taking photos and smiling at it because it's something you don't see every day. If you're a shy retiring type, the Nissan Figaro is not for you. Everywhere you go in this thing, you get looks. People staring at it in cars, kids taking photos, older people trying to work out what it is, and it's a fantastic experience because it's not a Ferrari. You're not getting judged or looked down on or sneered at for driving it. People are smiling. You can't help but love the Figaro because it's such a charming vehicle. When I heard that I'd get to drive a Figaro, I was ecstatic. I've loved these cars for years and driving one has only cemented that love for them. It really is the best of both worlds. You get the old school charm and the styling and the beautiful interior detailing, but with modern day conveniences, electric windows, a CD player, air conditioning, a modern fuel injected engine from Nissan, so you know it's always gonna start. It's the best of both worlds. So if you must have a relatively modern car to use as a daily driver, take the Nissan Figaro, because as it proves, there's no school like the old school.